I can't remember ever not loving animals. I grew up in a family where we adopted our pets from shelters or we picked them up off the side of the road and I knew that one day when I had my own place I would adopt my own pet. What I didn't realize was after I moved out of my parents house my forever dog would find me. In 2001 I was driving down a country road and this little 15 pound puppy jumped out in front of my car desperately trying to get my attention. I stopped the car, got out and scooped him up and immediately felt this connection with him. So I knew I had to help him and I had to bring him home. After making a few phone calls, I had a vet appointment for him and off we went to the vet. On the way down that same road, I found five more puppies. I could not believe it, but I couldn't leave them there. So I scooped them all up and we went to the vet. My experience of trying to find those five dogs a home sparked something in me and I knew it was my calling in life to find forever homes for dogs just like them that were displaced. Notice that I said five dogs. That courageous puppy that jumped out in front of my car, saved his own life along with his sibling's life, is this guy right here. Let me introduce you to Mac. High five. <laughs> Many people ask us, where do we get our dogs? And the real answer is everywhere. We do not have a shortage of animals. Unfortunately, there are animals all over the place that need our help. We get calls from families that have nowhere else to turn. They don't know what to do with their dog for whatever reason, they can no longer keep them. We have shelters that are so overcrowded that they're putting dogs to sleep every single day and they're sending us pictures and emails and heartbreaking stories and we just try to save as many of those dogs as we can. And we also are preferred partners with many of the large organizations such as Animal Rescue Corps who will go in and save 200, 300 dogs at a time from puppy mills, from just hoarding situations, abuse cases. And so we are called to go in and help hundreds of dogs at a time. And we need foster parents for urgent situations like that so that we can save as many as possible at one time. I got into fostering because um, I didn't feel like I could bring more um, forever dogs or cats into my home. I have two dogs and two cats of my own that I love and my house is pretty full so I really did it for selfish reasons. I just wanted to have a way to be around more dogs and to love more dogs and so doing it temporarily like that is a way for me to, to, to bring more into my life. Smiley got his name honest. He what just stood out to me at the end of this huge row of dogs from this major animal abuse case bust and as soon as I walked in the doors I was looking at all the dogs and trying to figure out how are we going to help all these dogs who can we save and there at the end is Smiley with his silly little grin and his teeth sticking out and he was just wagging his tail like he knew I was coming to save him. My favorite memory of my last foster dog who was Smiley my favorite memory is just the first time I got to see him in person I had known for for a little while that I was going to uh, be getting Smiley and I'd seen some pictures of him that Ark had put online from the rescue and I'd gotten so excited I'd gone on bought little bibs and clothes and toys and stuff for him and the build up for me was so great for this little boy. Fostering, it, it, it's hard because, because of the challenge of letting the dogs go after you learn to love them and after you brought them into your home. But you do it again because you know that there are more dogs out there that that needs you. It's a, it's, um, it's a feeling of being able to help a dog in a way that's different than any other way. That the role you play in their lives is so important and you can see that and you can you can feel that so um, that's the reason I keep doing it. I just want to play that important role in, in more dogs lives. We provide all of the medical needs, all of the supplies, even training tips. We have trainers that are available to us to help with any type of issues that may arise after a dog's in your home. And so what we need from you is love and a stable environment. We just need for you to show that dog what a true life, a, a true loving environment is like. Basically, you treat them as your own dog. So it's really simple. 
We know that not everyone can foster, so for those that can't, we do have a lot of volunteer opportunities as well. Uh, we have opportunities like adoption days uh, on the fourth Saturday of every month. We have dog and car washes in the summer, so people can, can help wash cars and dogs to help uh, raise money. Uh, we have events like Barktoberfest in the fall. It's a lot of fun where people bring their dogs and costumes and we like to have volunteers available there to talk uh, to people about Agape. Our volunteer opportunities go far beyond actually being out with the dogs or working at events that where the dogs are present. There's a lot of things that folks can do from their home. Um, so we're very flexible, a lot of behind the scenes volunteer opportunities. So whether it be uh, graphic design, uh, social media, um, setting up fundraisers or volunteer events, um, legal representation. So there's a lot of different things that, that folks can, can do to help. Uh, we just need people. Um, you know, time is, is so valuable. Time is, is just as valuable as money. And that's why volunteerism is so important. And, and really, if you have a skill or, or something that, that you'd like to provide that you think Agape could benefit from, we could probably benefit from it. Our previous dog had passed away and my husband and I knew we wanted another dog. I was familiar with Agape from having worked with Tanya and I looked on her website and saw Faith. Um, there was a little bit of a before and after story with Faith. When she was rescued by Agape, she was six to seven months old and she had a terrible case of mange. It was so bad, in fact, that the vet recommended to Tanya that Faith be put down. She said, give me a week and let's see, let me see what I can do with this dog. And here we have her five years later. So it was a very good outcome. And I think that's what Agape is all about. They take the dogs that need a little extra love and they put them in foster parents' homes and they work with them to make sure that they're healthy, that they're well-trained and well-mannered. And when you work with Agape, you know the personality of the dog that you're getting. Um, it's really, one, one of the things that I really love about Agape is because the dogs are in foster homes, they're able to tell you about the personality of the dogs, and so you really understand who you're getting and what they're gonna be like. She makes us laugh at least once a day. And I think that is part of just the charm and the knowledge she has that um, she was saved and she was given another chance. And my husband and I often look at one another and we say, you know, if more people would live life the faith way, that the world would be happier because she is so enthusiastic. I think every agape dog is a special dog and unconditional love is what you're gonna get. We say that we're creating love stories with Agape, and it really is, because you know, I love my dog, and I know that uh, the, the people that come to us to find their, their perfect dog will find that perfect love in their new sweet dog. So my name is Peg Petrelli, and I'm the state liaison for Tennessee for Animal Rescue Corps. Agape Animal Rescue has been one of our tremendous placement partners. Whenever we have a large-scale animal rescue, they are right there supporting us 100% supporting these animals. We are just blessed to have Agape. Part of their mission is to rehabilitate these dogs, to make them the promise that their suffering has ended forever and they'll now live as the dogs they never had the opportunity to be. So we're incredibly grateful to have the support and the partnership of Agape Animal Rescue. We feel very blessed that Agape has come so far since the beginning. We're able to save lives because of our foster parents who open their homes, our volunteers who selflessly give us their time, and because of our generous supporters who give us the funds that allow the Agape Animal Rescue Program to continue saving lives. On behalf of everyone at Agape Animal Rescue, thank you.